loud. Okay. Recording. So I wanted to go ahead and just welcome everybody. Um, it was important to me to really involve some of our other areas that aren't necessarily into wellness, which is why we had the puppy and why I'm bringing um, Max today too. Max was such an integral role of like really healthy modern get going because as a brand new startup um, in the wellness sphere, word of mouth when you work on the ninth floor is great, but there's also how do you tap into these other arenas of marketing. And what I've realized over the last uh, three years of being in business, three and a half years really, is that without a great marketing plan, um, a lot of your ideas are just good ideas. And marketing is such an integral key to the success of a business. And Max, who I actually met a long time ago through um, an ex-boyfriend, randomly, we're going to be so bold and honest on uh, Zoom, uh, Max really impressed me with the work he was doing at that time. And we end, he ended up getting into his own entrepreneurial business of Hell's Creative, which I'll tell you about, and modern worked with Max and we were just really blown away. And I'm sure if you've seen all our press or seen how we've been noted and seen maybe some of our marketing ads, then you would know that the person behind a lot of that was Max and our PR person too, uh, who I'm still working on to give a talk. So anyway, without further ado, Max, I am just going to mute, let you talk from here and tell us a bit about yourself and what you do. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank you for that awesome introduction. Uh, if you can get Sydney, your PR lady, to do one of these talks, I would certainly love to chime into that. I've had a, the pleasure of working with Sydney through Alex on multiple occasions, and she's absolutely amazing. I, I always said if I had my own company that I needed press for, uh, I don't think Hell's Creative would value too much from press, but if I had my own actual company that sold a product or service, I, I would certainly use Sydney without a doubt. So big fan of her. But um, yeah, thanks everyone for, for tuning in live or watching this, you know, uh, after we've recorded it. My name is Max. I am the CEO and co-founder of Hell's Creative out of Hell's Kitchen, New York City. That's why we're called Hell's Creative. We're not Satanists or anything. But uh, we are a Facebook, Instagram, and Google ads agency. So about three years ago, I was working in investment banking, helping early stage companies raise capital. So just like Alex said, right, a lot of the times you have a really good idea, but it's really expensive to get your first round of products made, or it's, for, it's really expensive to get, you know, the, the lease for your first store. Um, so we were giving funding, giving financing to early stage startups. And when I realized that I didn't want to wear a suit and tie for the rest of my life on Wall Street, I started to think about how I can have a more direct impact on companies, because no matter how much money you invest in a startup, if it doesn't have a good way to grow and scale their revenue and grow and scale their, their marketing spend, um, their SOL, they're, they're just, your investment is gone and that company is going to fold. So I taught myself Facebook ads, taught myself Google ads, um, joined up with a business partner who really knew the, the landscape and knew the, the game. Um, and fast forward three years, we've worked with 90 companies. Uh, we've helped drive, you know, tens of millions of dollars in revenue for all sorts of different companies from, hospitality brands like modern to hotels and gyms spas co-working spaces around the globe um, as well as e-commerce brands so just like a traditional facebook google ads agency even though it's not so traditional since they've only been around maybe 10 years um, we work with a lot of e-commerce brands selling i know before we started recording we were talking about vitamins we've sold vitamins skincare children's swim goggles uh, high-end heels with patent pending you know, comfort technology, because heels are really annoying to walk in, t-shirt brands, we now wrap a sock line. Um, you know, we, we've worked with 90 companies <laughs> around the globe. So it's been, a, it's been a pretty amazing journey in the last three years. I have an awesome team that works with me now out of Hell's Kitchen, although we're now all working from our own kitchens uh -huh. uh, during this quarantine. But, um, you know, I, I've really developed an expertise in marketing and all things marketing and, and sales. So I'm happy to help any practitioner, any company, any hospitality brand service provider, figure out how they can increase their revenue. Because at the end of the day, it's great to get followers. It's great to get impressions on a post. It's great to get written up in the New York Times or in the New Yorker, like Modern Sanctuary has been written up in many, many times, um, New York Magazine. But if, at the end of the day, if you're not getting revenue, if you're not actually generating business and converting to the bottom line, your, your efforts are really worthless in my opinion. So happy to help as much as I can. Awesome.
So Max, let's start from the beginning. How would you define what marketing is? Wow, that's never been asked that question. <laughs> I've done a lot of these, especially in the last few weeks of quarantine, but never been asked how would I define marketing? I think marketing is the act of getting your brand in front of people. That's the simplest, easiest way to explain it. Amazing. And when you're working, I know a lot of clients will come and ask you to work with you. What for you when you're working with practitioners is a good client? Because I think a lot of people just assume, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of marketing people who will take any client, but there are parameters, you know, we all need marketing, but for a marketing company, what are you guys looking for? Yeah, that's kind of the money question, right? I, I think from the time we set on to start with a client, we know if it's going to be a real success or if we're going to have challenge with it from the get-go. There's always two or three things that tell us whether we're set up for success from the time we start really adding marketing to or our services and our expertise to their marketing mix. Um, the first and foremost is experience. Coming out the gate, a lot of people think that they can invest in Facebook ads, they can invest in Google ads, um, they can invest in SEO and start to see results like right off the bat. And that's just not possible. I always say the biggest fallacy with Facebook ads is the fact that within an hour, you could be running ads to your target customer and people will click over to your website. That does not mean that within an hour, people will start seeing your ads clicking and then buying. So people who have been in business for a while that have amazing customers, that have amazing customer testimonials, that have a very strong idea of pricing, they know where they fit in the market. They know whether they're on the low end. They know whether they're on the high end. Um, I, I think the more experience a brand or a service practitioner has, the more they are set up for success to add Facebook ads, Google ads, SEO, SEM, anything into their mix. It's just going to help compound that success that much faster. Got it. And also, I guess another question that comes to mind is, what are some of the false expectations other than what you just mentioned that clients have typically that you need to really set the expectation for them? Yeah, I, I think the biggest expectation is just that it takes time. Uh, you know, we have a lot of like, our, our business changed, and this is one of my favorite stories to tell. Our business changed when we went from speaking advertising speak to speaking layman's terms and speaking like everyone else. So for the longest time, for the first year and a half of our agency, when you landed on our website, it said, we help drive growth using you know facebook ads and google ads and, and highly optimized for roi like all sorts of marketing and advertising jargon and our business changed when we changed that masthead to we help companies make one dollar for every four dollars they spend on digital ads right that's something even my mom or my grandma or probably even my puppy can understand so you know the finding the right language and finding the right um wording and verbiage and taglines that speak to everyone but also your core audience is, is very 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 important but the downside of having a very broad tagline that claims we can turn a dollar into four dollars is it doesn't work for everyone and it takes time so some clients right off the bat we will you know start seeing a 3x 4x roi meaning they're spending you know a hundred dollars a day we're getting X amount of clicks over to the website, X amount of people are purchasing, and then that's resulting in 200 or $300 in direct revenue that we can track back to those ads, right. right? Sometimes that happens, but more often than not, it takes three, four, five, six months for people to start understanding your website, for people to start understanding your brand, for people to start, excuse me, really understanding the product or service that you offer, because Harvard Business School tells us it takes five times for someone to see or recognize your brand before they even decide if they're going to purchase or not. So it, the, the fallacy is that you can turn on ads overnight. You can start posting to social media, throw up some hashtags and you'll start getting all sorts of revenue. I'm a mentor to a couple different startup accelerator programs and I'm kind of like the Simon Cowell on the advisory panel when companies are pitching us because when they get to the marketing section, they say, Oh, our marketing strategy is social media. Well, social media is not a marketing strategy. There's so many things inside of social media that you need to be doing, but simply posting to an Instagram page, posting to a Facebook page, 
and you know throwing up some hashtags or even if it's the best piece of content it's not enough to actually drive your revenue and i think that's why we found so much success in terms of getting awesome innovative brands to work with us is because we're very to the point we simply explain look if you're investing money with us or even on a freelancer or into a like bot to get you more likes if you're investing money into your marketing and it's not yielding some results some tangible results after four or five six months you're not doing it right and you're wasting your money. Got it. So I've heard this question a lot, right? Like I was talking with an old friend of mine. We got into this heated argument. Well, not heated, but like, you know, <laughs> of why do you need a marketing person to run Facebook ads? Anybody can run them. Alex, you can run them yourself. Why are you paying someone? Yeah. What would you say to someone like that? Because I would I say, you and I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I would say you're right. I would tell that person you're 100% accurate. Um, anyone can learn Facebook ads. And the truth is I majored in entrepreneurship. I never took a class on Facebook ads. Um, it was not something that I was born to do. It's not something that I really was educated on to do. Um, you know, it's really something that anyone can do. I just recognized that there was a need for this. And I went on YouTube and taught myself Facebook ads and Google ads. So I think the person who made that comment to you is spot on and absolutely correct. Alex can do it for modern, but the truth is you can go to law school and teach yourself law and become a lawyer and you can do all the contracts for modern, but who has the time to do that, right? Who has the time to, you know, learn how to weld the walls together in modern because I was there before it opened and I saw the, the, you know, lights hang. I saw the guy literally like screw in the lights in the, in the uh, salt room, like, you can teach yourself pretty much any skill. It just comes down to the value of that skill, right? So like to use the Gary Vee example, a basketball is worthless to me. I can't take a basketball and record a video of me and turn that into money or no one will come pay to see me play basketball. But to LeBron James, a, bat, a single basketball is literally worth a billion dollars. Well, it's a little bit different because he has a perfect physical specimen. Like he is a perfect physical specimen. But at the end of the day, he put in more hours, more effort, more training than anyone else did. And so the value of a basketball is worth so, so, so much more to him. It's the same thing with Facebook ads. It's the same thing with Beethoven learning to play piano, right? Some things it naturally comes to you and it's easier to learn than others. But with anything else, if you don't have the time to do it and to really become an expert at it, then it's not worth you doing yourself. And so by hiring an agency or a freelancer, you're not only paying for them to quote unquote do it for you and the time it takes, you're also paying for the experience of them working with other clients, understanding the platform better, knowing the nuances of all the different levers to pull inside of Facebook and Google ads. So I highly recommend people to learn Facebook ads, learn Google ads. It's a skill that's not going away anytime soon. But if you're really trying to build a business and you have 14 other things to do and you're wearing 14 other hats because you're a co-founder or a CEO or an entrepreneur, do not waste your time because you will be wasting your money and hurting yourself even more. Yeah. And I think what's interesting about what you're talking about too, for those people who are just joining, I had asked Max um, specifically, like, why should I pay someone to do Facebook ads if anyone can run a Facebook ad? Um, most importantly, what I've learned having worked with you for a long time is that yeah, anyone can run an ad, but it's what do you do with the data and how do you analyze the data when you get it? Because the data is so telling, like numbers don't lie once you associate them and you learn like what's converting, how much is this converting and where are the dollars coming in and where are we losing money? And the other interesting thing that you and I had talked about when we did work, do the Facebook and Google ads was, you know, who do we retarget? And does, if I put a hundred dollars in and I get a thousand out, does putting 200 in get 2000 out? And what is that oh, curve of like, of like right. asking? And quite frankly, if that $8,000 wasn't in the account, I would have gone no. Okay. Um, just gonna mute him. Uh, so just going back to what you were saying, Max, you know, it's interesting to look at, you know, where are your stop losses and how do you reshift money to certain things? And then also it's like there's targeting and retargeting and demographics and specifics. 
Um, I guess the question that I had next for you is you've worked with a bunch of wellness people. Um, what have you learned about our industry that, you know, can help people know that you are a great person to work with? And that's a great question. There's one other thing that, that came to my mind on your note to the yeah. previous one. So I'll, I'll address that. It's just, you're, you're absolutely right. And I don't think I dove deep enough into my response about that. It's really, really, really important that people understand that it's easy to create a Facebook ad. It's easy to step on a basketball court and shoot a basketball at the hoop. And it's just as easy to create the Facebook ad. But like Alex said, there's so many nuanced things that you just don't know because you've never been exposed to it. So all of the things like she mentioned, like top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel, retargeting, pixels, DPA campaigns, I can rattle off a list of 100 different things that are super, super important uh, that you just don't know and that you're not going to experience unless you're pushed and poked in the Facebook or Google ads manager to that specific segment. Um, and so to segue that into the new question, what is unique to the wellness world? or to the wellness practitioner world when it comes to Facebook ads, Google ads, optimizing marketing campaigns. I think it's really two things. To the point I was just talking about, I think it really comes down to identifying the right target audiences on the platform that makes sense for your target audience or for your campaign. So it's easy to say, okay, well, all moms would be interested in a massage, let's just say because moms are stressed and if you have a kid you have some sort of disposable income most likely so maybe you can afford a massage but taking that to the next level within just the broad category of moms would be a perfect person for me to show my ad to to say hey i'd like to give you a massage for 100 bucks or 500 bucks whatever that number is even more specifically who is that target person what kind of magazines do they read what kind of tv shows do they watch right knowing in the facebook ads manager to say okay moms in this neighborhood, in this demographic, who read Vanity Fair, who have toddlers between the ages of X and X, who are six years into their relationship or 10 years or 15 years into their relationship, knowing all of those different things to add to the target audience is so, so, so important. And thinking outside the box, right? Like reading Vanity Fair might have nothing to do with you giving massages, but putting yourself in the shoes of your target demographic is the most important thing. And when it comes to wellness practitioners and wellness in general, what I've learned is people either think it's a gimmick or they buy into it 110%. So if you're not showing your ad or if you're not you know, using the hashtags that you think people who are your core target demo are really going to buy into your product use or watch or view, then you're wasting your money and you're wasting your time. So really getting a sense of who your target demo is and going deep into that matrix of what do they watch? What do they read? How old are they? Are they male, female? How, you know, where do they live? What zip codes? What's their income? Really understanding that is more important for wellness brands than any, 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 any other brand because people will start to comment on ads. This is a gimmick. This doesn't make sense. This is too expensive. But for the people who really buy into what you're selling, Sky's the limit. You just have to really narrowly target them on Facebook and Google. Yeah, I think another interesting conversation I had um, was the language of the ads, right? It's the best med spa in New York or the best this are, you know, we can freeze your fat off, right? And it's like, we would hope you can do that if it's a service you offer, right? Like, it's yeah. really getting to the nitty gritty of, for, you know, I just had a baby. It's get the body you had before you were pregnant back like I'd be like yes I want that um it's how do you <laughs> write language and sometimes you know it is a skill that you learn I know Jim would hammer in with us like like how we change the language to tell the story to get the buy-in so it all feeds into that too of why a marketing agency knows how to write the language for those niche marketing um too. Yeah. And I think it really goes back to what I was saying before. If you have case studies, if you have customer testimonials, it goes so far. Like I can't tell you the value of a customer testimonial, the value of a, five, of, you know, a small handful of five-star reviews. The value is tremendous. You can say all day long, we can freeze your fat away, or you can say all day long, get the body you had before. But if you don't have compelling videos, pictures, and, and customer testimonials, you're wasting your money, you're wasting your time. So 
go out, give your product away, give your service away for free or at a crazy discount just to get your first five, six, seven, then it will start to snowball. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if you're coming out the gate saying, I just learned how to do this, or I have three, three people that I've done it for, and I expect them to pay $200 because the practitioner next to me charges 200 bucks for it. You're just not, you're just not thinking uh, with, you know, in the right mindset. Yeah, I think I've heard that from a lot of wellness practitioners <laughs> having now run modern where we are a rental facility. Um, right. You can tell who's going to be staying around a long time and who, you know, they understand the marketing need and the, you know, networking I think is imperative too of getting out because so many people have been like, gosh, I got the best training. I would imagine people and I've got, built a beautiful website. Why are people not like flooding in the door? Um, and it takes a lot to get out there as a business. Yeah. And with any service business, you know, your referral game is your most important game. So understanding when to ask, hey, do you know anyone that would be interested in a service or knowing what kind of incentives to give your existing customer base is arguably as important as getting new customers in, right? right. Getting new customers through new channels like Facebook or Instagram or Google or a website is, is helpful and beneficial. But knowing when to ask your existing customer base right. for a referral and say, Hey, if you refer someone, I'll give them 50% off and I'll give you 50% off your next one. You know, you, you, at first you're thinking I would never give my, my service away for 50% off that devalues me. But what you don't understand and what you not don't understand, but what you're missing is on paper, you're losing that hundred bucks. You're losing that 50 bucks for that session, but you're gaining a thousand dollars in long-term value or as what we call lifetime value LTV of that customer. And so do not, that's another comment specifically for wellness brands. Do not be afraid to discount. So many brands, so many practitioners, they tell me, because I've had the experience working with so many at Modern, they tell me, I don't want to discount it. It devalues my brand. It devalues this. It devalues that. Everyone needs to experience your product or your service for the first time. You will not make money as a, as a spa, as a wellness practitioner, selling vitamins, selling really anything in the wellness space. You will not make any money with one purchase. So almost give away your product for free or give away it for 50 cents or sorry, 50% off. You're going to make so much more money in the long run. Do not, do not, do not forget that the power of giving a discount is the most valuable thing that you can possibly do. It's not going to affect your brand. I promise. Like, everyone says to me Louis Vuitton never goes on sale well they're Louis Vuitton you're not Louis Vuitton <laughs> right and I can attest to this when I started my hypnotherapy practice back in 2010 I did a lot of giving it away when I was working out in Chicago and then when I moved to New York I actually put myself on Groupon and I know a lot of people poo-pooed it and were not like were like oh I wouldn't do it but what's interesting about being a practitioner on Groupon, if you have a good service that's unique and powerful enough, people are going to want to come back. They did come back. And the most important thing that I did was to make sure that I asked in a polite and non-pushy way, if you enjoyed the service, I'd love you to write a review um, of your experience. And so Yelp actually, because I was so proactive at getting reviews, and it was just a simple email that went out, no, no pushing Yelp became one of the greatest resources for me as a, a wellness um, practitioner as well. Now, people kept asking once my Groupon deal expired if I was going to offer another one. And I said, you know, no, but it gave me enough clientele, one, to practice. But two, I knew those people were coming in and having a great experience. Um, and then those people talked. And then I gradually went from charging, I think it was like a hundred dollars and I now charge 400 for my initial consult. So it's like you keep, as you build, keep adding it up, but you know, the better the service, um, kindness and et cetera, the better. I do not recommend though the Yelp. Um, if you leave a review, I'll give you something for free. Definitely stay away. That will bite you in the ass. I've never done it. I've seen it bite some other practitioners in the ass too. Um, cause they will write you up in your comment around that for sure. Um, yeah, that's a good point. When I first met you, I remember you sent me like a deck. You were like, hey, here's like my business. Here's what I do. And on the first or second slide, it said I have like 200, like 150 like reviews on Yelp. I'm the number one rated New York City 
you know, um, Hypnotist. Uh, hip, hypnotist. I was trying to get the right word. Um, I keep thinking of hypnotherapy. Uh, you know, I'm the number one rated hypno, hypnotist yeah. in New York. And I'm like, how is that even a thing? Like, how do you know if you're the number one hypnotist? But okay, on Yelp, literally, the, the tool that all the small businesses in the world use to review themselves and to check out other competitors, Alex was number one. And when you Googled Alex, I don't know if it still exists, but when I first met Alex four or five years ago, when I Googled her after looking up the deck, it was the first thing that came up was her Yelp review. That is so, so, so powerful. Google my business the same way. One of my best friend's dad owns a eyeglass store. Um, they sell, you know, like eyeglasses. And in a matter of a week, we encouraged him just as like his son and his son's friend, we encourage him to have everyone who comes in their store before they walk out the door, if they purchased a pair of glasses, write a five-star review on Google my business. And a month later, he started getting a ton of people walking in the door like, I found you on Google. I found you on Google. 40 reviews later. You know, the power of testimonials, the power of customer case studies is the most undervalued thing, I think, for really any company, but specifically wellness practitioners. I cannot recommend getting those testimonials highly enough. And the truth is, if your customers really love your product, don't feel bad asking, right? They're gonna love to recommend you. They're gonna love to spend you know, a minute writing two or three sentences about you. It's two or three minutes of their time that can make you tens of thousands of dollars in the long run. Um, another question I have for you regarding Instagram and Facebook. I have seen a lot of wellness practitioners have so much personal stuff on their business. Um, page, right? So I know for me, I have the Modern Sanctuary Instagram account, now the Modern Haven one, which we're moving some stuff. I have my personal account, and then I have my private practice. What is your feeling for best practices? Because I see a lot of people use their personal account because let's face it, you are sometimes you are the name of your business. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe a photo of your baby doesn't really associate professionally in terms of what you're doing. Yeah, so I think this is 110% personal feel and personal choice. There really is no right answer here. I think, like you said, if you are the name of your brand and if you don't have a separate brand and if it's really you and you don't really plan to hire other people long-term and you really just wanna be your own practitioner, I have no problem with people from a marketing perspective using their personal Instagram as their business Instagram because that adds a layer of connectability to you and to your brand. So yes, maybe a picture of your new baby or your puppy or your Thursday night out with your girlfriends or guy friends does not reflect positively on your business, but it does add that personal layer when you are your personal brand. So I think this is 110% up to you. If your goal is to grow a big following um, and, and eventually hire people, then I would start a, a new account under a new name completely. But if you don't ever plan to hire anyone to you know, upsell your services to or pass some of the services that you get through your Instagram off to those people to do the work or to do the service, then I'm totally fine from a marketing perspective, you know, staying on your personal account. I think if anything, it's positive and it'll add some layer of, oh, she also had a baby, like I had a baby and I went through that too. Or, oh, that's a really cute baby, you know, I wanna support her. Or it just adds that layer of, of personality to your brand and to your, your company's brand or your personal brand that a lot of big companies struggle with because they can't just post a picture of a baby that their employee had or that their founder had. Right, I know we have some of that too. Like I know, you know, how do you integrate the founder within the modern sanctuary th mission? Because I guess that's the next question I have. How much does your Instagram feed or Facebook page for your business, if you're, you are your business, mm -hmm. you know, how important is having that layout? You know, a lot of people talk about having a layout, a color scheme, like the story. Um, and I guess in some ways it's like you have to have a story because people mm -hmm. buy the story and they buy you, yeah. you, and then you can, by, by that way, say, okay, does this post really promote what I'm trying to do on my website and trying to get the buy-in of customers, if that's the intention? Yeah, so, so two things here, really. One, it really doesn't matter the layout or the grid, as people call it. 
it does not matter one bit what it looks like. In terms of the content you post, the only thing that matters is that it's bringing value or striking some sort of emotion in the people who are seeing the content. That's literally it. Those are your two rules of thumb, right? Is my, and those are the two questions you should ask yourself before you post every single piece of content. Does this bring value to the person that's seeing it? Or does this strike some kind of strong emotion, positive or negative, a strong emotion in the person that's seeing the content? Beyond that, it really doesn't matter the grid or looking really pretty or the fonts or the colors you use. Obviously, you don't want it to look like a kindergartner just made it, but it, it really doesn't matter. The one thing when it comes to Facebook pages and Instagram pages that I cannot stress enough to any wellness practitioner brand or any company on the planet is the following. People forget that social media is social. Practitioners come to me all the time. Service providers come to me all the time. Coaches, consultants come to me all the time. How do I get more followers on Instagram? And I say, go ask the people who have 5,000 followers or even 3,000 followers if they get any of their business by posting content. The answer will always be no. Always, 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 always be no. You get customers through Facebook. You get customers through Instagram by actually being social on the platforms. It's not enough to post and use a hashtag. You need to be going to the hashtags that you use yourself, looking at all the posts that people use that hashtag on or for, and you need to be commenting. You need to be engaging and being social on the platform. So many companies, I, I can name a, like hundreds of companies I've either worked with through our agency, mentored through startup accelerators, you know, coaching sessions, webinars like this, you know, in the Q and A's one-on-one -on -one afterwards, I cannot stress this enough. You have to be social on these platforms. It's not enough to just post. You have to comment, you have to like, you have to go seek out other people who are in that target demo. Like I said, not just moms, but moms who read these magazines, moms who live here, moms who engage with XYZ accounts. You have to go message them. You have to DM them. You have to comment on them, or it's not even worth having an Instagram in the first place. So what does that look like, right? So I look up meditation, right? Mm -hmm. I f find a couple posts that are using them. I go in there and I just comment like loving your content or do I, should I make a note of something specific? Cause I know we get all these, I'm like, oh, that's a bot again. Or Jim helped me invest $500 and turned it into a thousand of which I'm always like, fan. <laughs> Um, but what does that look like? Is it D like you mentioned DMing is one. Do you make it personal? Like share a story? Tell me a bit more. Yep. So the best advice I can give any company or practitioner outside of running Facebook or Google ads is to schedule 30 minutes every single day and call it your golden hour or golden 30 minutes. Um, dedicate 30 minutes to this every single day. And I promise you, if you do what I'm about to say every single day for a month, month and a half, you will have an increase in revenue or an increase in new clients or an increase in new customers. So calendar block out 30 minutes, be dedicated, do not push it off, right? Be very dedicated, but spend that 30 minutes finding those accounts. So you found, find the hashtag. And if it's, you are a, you know, you have a meditation space, right? Find people that use hashtag meditate NYC or meditation in Central Park or meditating in Central Park or whatever it is that shows that people are meditating in NYC go on that post, comment something specific, use that person's name. So I, I like your point, Alex, use that person's name. So it doesn't feel like about, Hey, Alex, really glad to see that you're using central park for your meditation space. We hope you'll come check out one of our meditation classes in Fidei or in, you know, union square or wherever, and then go onto their page and DM them. Love to see that you're doing meditation in Central Park or wherever you're doing meditation. You know, would you be interested in coming to one of our classes if I gave you 50% off? And I promise you, if you do this every day for 30 minutes in a month, you will have a significantly more amount of sales or bookings or clients or whatever. 90% of the people will either never respond or they might even message you like no or no thanks or screw off or they'll just see it and it'll be a read receipt and you'll get sad but five or 10% of those people will respond. Yes. And they will come or they will become a client or they will try your first thing. And the only thing that it took for you to get there is 30 minutes every day. That's all it took. And then you have them as you know, a customer for 
X weeks, X months, X years. Amazing. And it, it. it cost you anything other than your time. So, so exactly. far we've talked about, let's see, we've talked about Instagram. We've talked about Facebook ads. Yes, anyone can do them, but it's all about the data. We've mm -hmm. talked about networking, which I'd love to jump in a little bit later too, to talk about from my personal experience, because networking, mm -hmm. Knowing how to network and in a professional setting will just make you a more professional in your own realm. Um, how about direct? Oh, last question on the social media is how often and when? Got it. So when it comes to socializing, every second, every day, all the time, 24 7, 365. When it comes to posting, uh, your goal really should be once a day if you're able to deliver valuable content every single day. Times of day really depend. Some people say noon, some people say 8 p.m., some people say right in the mornings. Uh, the best thing that you can do is if you have your account set up as a business account, in the top right corner when you're on your profile, you can click analytics and Instagram will actually tell you when the majority of your followers are online every single day of the week and the times for that specific day. So awesome. Instagram has that data for you. Um, literally, if you have a business account, you have to have a business account. If you have a business, if you have a business account, um, click to your profile in the bottom right corner, click the three little lines or dots, I forget what it is in the top right, click analytics. And then you can comb through whether your demographics or your followers are male, female, where they live, what their ages are, what kind of things they're interested in, as well as what time of day, what day of week they're on most. Great. And I think one very valuable point that you had mentioned in this, and I want to reiterate to everyone too, is the value of an intro offer. Um, Max hammered this into my mind. Have an intro offer to get people in so they can try your product. From there, it's also having a really good plan of once you get them in, what are you offering them to? Right. So that leads us, you know, it's like, come try a salt room session. Like I know we offer three salt room classes for $45 when one class is 30 just to get people in. Right. And then mm. after they do that and they finish their third, it's how do you then have a marketing chain set up to get them to return? which was so important that you told me, which will lead me into mailers. <laughs> and MailChimp or however you want to do it. MailChimp is great. Um, constant contact. Squarespace now has a whole system for it too. Mm -hmm. Tell me about mailers. Yeah, there, so but you get email a lot newsletters. Email newsletters is another great channel for you to market on. Um, you know, again, it's, it's figuring out what are those five touch points that you need to hit in order for people to even decide if they're going to purchase or, you know, become a customer. So one of those channels can be Instagram. Like we've talked about one of those channels can be a Facebook ad. Like we've talked about one of those channels can be a referral. Like we talked about another channel is email marketing. Uh, email newsletters are very, very, very valuable if you're bringing valuable content. So I highly recommend in a similar way to creating a 30 minute daily block on your calendar to log on to Instagram and start DMing or commenting on people's Instagram posts. I think you should spend an hour, so a calendar block an hour every week, creating a very valuable email newsletter and sending it out at the same time every week in a contextual format. And what I mean by contextual format is the, the best example that I get and the best example I can give is a long time ago, I used to subscribe to GQ magazine because I'm a guy and I like fashion. Well, I stopped the subscription because I didn't have time to read the magazine, but they put me on their email newsletter and their weekly email newsletter comes out every single Saturday morning. And it's always their four or five best articles from that week. And they always have one watch article. They always have one article of sales and they always have one celebrity article. And then the fourth one always rotates. So sometimes the fourth and fifth one always rotates because it comes out every Saturday morning. And because I don't get a lot of emails every Saturday morning. And because I'm a little bit away from the business mindset of the week and the hustle and bustle of my job and my career. Right. I look forward to that Saturday morning email every single Saturday. I'm like, wow, this is a great opportunity for me to look and like catch up on fashion for the week. And I know it comes out every Saturday. I think it's like 9 a.m. It's something that is predictable, that brings me value, that I look forward to every week. 
find whatever those three things are in your particular industry. So if you are a, uh, you know, if you're a nutritionist, every Sunday night, maybe it's meal prep tips, right? Here's the, this week's meal prep tips. Or if it's, you know, Thursday night, maybe it's like, here's how you can have fun this weekend and still stay away from sugar or, you know, eat healthy when you're not at the office or whatever it is, right? Or maybe, you know, you really want to focus for a couple months on people eating healthy in the office. So you email them at like 10, 30, 11, right before they choose what they're going to have for lunch that day, right? You want to find a cadence and make it contextual to the time that you're sending it out, the day of the week you're sending it out, and the people who you're sending it out to. Think about when they're going to be most in the mindset to do that. And it's also from having been down this route, when you're sending out, you know, if you do a mailer um, and people, or if people sign up for your newsletter and that it auto blasts them like at first intro offer and then like one and two weeks later, make sure you're tracking what those intro offers are somewhere so that you know to turn them off and know what's running at all times. Uh, cause you will get people going, Oh, I got this email and you're going to be like, what, what email? And then it's always important to, yeah, I, th I think you're recognizing watching this, that a lot of this stuff comes full circle. So it's not just enough to have a case study. You have to put the case study on your website. You have to put the case study on Yelp. You have to put the case study on the emails, right? It's not just enough to have an intro offer you have to make sure that you're organizing it in such a way where the, in, the same intro offer is going to be all for May, right? And it's, you know, get this intro offer by the end of May, right? You're always coming up with a new intro offer to create scarcity and you're, you're pushing those through your marketing channels, which like I said, could be, or like we've talked about, could be your Instagram, could be your email newsletter, could be referrals, right? Tell your friends this, this intro offer exists, whatever, you know, until May 31st, whatever that date is. So all of these things really do work as a full circle and it's, it's not enough to just do one thing. Marketing is a lot. And to Alex's point earlier, you know, yes, you can certainly do everything yourself, but you have a million other things to do as a founder, as a CEO, as a practitioner, you know, it's not the worst idea in the world to log on to freelancer.com or upwork.com and find someone who can, you know, outsource or, or create that email template for you every week or, I literally have someone in India who logs into a couple of our clients' Instagram accounts and does the DMing and the commenting as a human, so it's not a bot, making sure that they're writing different things, um, you know, and, and commenting on things that are more contextual. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a never-ending process, but you'll start to get in a rhythm, you'll start to get in a cadence, and you'll see it work. It worked tremendously for, for a year, year and a half at Modern. We were able to really increase revenue, increase foot traffic, increase sales, um, and, and it takes time. It was Alex and I sitting you know, in her office for an hour once a week, sometimes even, you know, an hour, a couple times a week, outlining what sale do we want to run for May? Do we think this is going to work? And then at the end of May, which sale worked best or of the last three months, which one worked best? Did we get more people that came into the sale that mentioned the email or mentioned the Facebook ads or mentioned the Instagram posts? Like all of these things matter, but it's a, it's a never ending cycle that you got to be in love with and you got to want to do it or you got to outsource to someone else because you can get chewed alive and, and so frustrated and want to pull your hair out <laughs> if, oh, no. if you try to do it yourself all alone. Yeah. The other thing that has been very helpful when working with a company is when I worked with Max uh, and, you know, everyone can implement this too, is to go through the data. They put pixels in the website. You can see where people are dropping off, right? Like we learned through working with Max that there were a couple key places that Modern's website was just not user friendly. And we were losing a lot of business from it because it was not navigate, navigable uh, properly. So that was really interesting too. To yeah, uh, I, think, I think it really depends. If you're a practitioner, your website analytics is not going to be the most important thing. But to Alex's point, if you are trying to drive a lot of not only traffic, but sales through a website, Google Analytics and Facebook ads pixels are going to be the, one of the most important things you look at every single day, really analyzing the data, where people are dropping off, where people are clicking to, how much time people are spending on pages. All of that is super, super, super important. And that's just another channel, right? Like as we go deeper into this conversation and into this webinar, like there are so many different channels, so many things you have to get right and you have to know to do well, to find success. But you don't have to be on Instagram and Facebook and email and website. You can pick two or three 
and really go all in, right? You can really be an expert on two. You can be an expert on Yelp and be an expert on email and you'll absolutely crush it. You can be an expert on you know, Instagram posting and text message marketing. I think text message marketing is a really um, you know, untapped potential. It has a lot of untapped potential for, for wellness practitioners. So there's a million channels out there, Twitter, Pinterest. I mean, if you're selling vitamins, right? Pinterest or Etsy could not be a better platform for you. But, and I'm just using the vitamin example because I know we are talking about it before. But there's so many different ways to reach your audience. It's, it's not about being on all of them. It's about being on two or three of them to the best of your ability. Yeah, and I think just to chime in on that, I know when I was ready to grow my business, um, it I ended up emailing all of my clients that I'd had so far to, to do a survey, to ask very specific questions, which some of the answers were really hard to take in. Um, like, what? Do, where did I succeed? Where didn't I? Ask your audience what they like and don't like. Don't ask your friends because they're just going to, you know, pat you on the back and be like, you're doing great. Ask your existing clients. Ask people in the industry to review it. Um, get reviews on your service of what didn't work for them, too, and maybe what didn't get them to come back because that's where you can improve in your business also to make it better. Because if, and I know that's a really hard and daring thing to do because it hurts. Um, but it is one of the biggest growth factors of working. You know, I work with, a, I'm a life coach and business coach too. It has been some of the biggest growth periods for a lot of my clients also. And then, you know, always remembering that you are your best marketing resource um, in all of this also. Yeah, you, use yourself. But I think that's a great point, Alex. It's just another one of those channels. It's another one of those five things or five times that you can add to the mix is a questionnaire, right? After someone's come and you've given them a massage or you've given them a you know, consultation on their nutrition as a nutritionist, send them a, a three question questionnaire. What did you like? What did you not like? Would you recommend this to a friend? Three simple, simple, simple questions. Some people will write a paragraph for each. Some people will write, three words for each and some people might not fill it in at all but by sending that out to everyone you're showing empathy because you're telling that person that you want to get better and you want to identify things where or areas where you can improve and you're also planting in the head would you recommend it to a friend without actually asking them recommend me to a friend yep and there are really simple ways to do this google spreadsheet not google spreadsheet google form has google uh, form yeah so it's totally free. If you have a Google platform, you can create the form, send it out. You can have, I know we've done it a couple ways with Modern where we made it anonymous. Um, so you can answer uh, scaled questions, one to five, multiple choice, et cetera. And then if you want a 20% off coupon for or discount for having filled this out, please leave your email. Um, and it's as simple as that. So if people want it, they'll leave their email. If not, they'll keep it anonymous and no one has to be any the wiser why it was a great experience or an awful experience too. Yeah, that's and a great point. Especially, especially, especially for first time customers. Sending them a survey with three simple questions. What did you like? What did you not like? Would you recommend this to a friend one out of five or yes or no? And then put in, you know, thanks for filling this. Would you like 15% off your next? And then that gets them to come back and send to a friend. Like it's, it's all a game, right? But I think if, if you've ever been to a practitioner yourself, a good one has this game set up. They have it on autopilot. It just works. And people wouldn't be doing this and doing these incentives and sending out these questionnaires if it didn't find success for them. It also, is, it helps you be proactive. The other thing I would say is if you did get a bad review on Yelp or Google or somewhere, Reply, 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 reply. People do look at what you are saying as the owner in response to a bad review, and it matters. I've seen some people who have just been like, I'll sue you, blah, blah, blah. It shows what type of company you are and who you are as a person. You know, acknowledge. It's, I have had clients who have left some not great reviews for very valid reasons that were outside of my control as the owner. Um, and the moment that I wrote them on uh, Google or whether it was Yelp, I've actually had a bunch of them come back in 
and rewrite their reviews saying that the customer service was so exempt, like awesome that we couldn't possibly, like we loved coming back and we're so happy we did. So that's one more thing to think about is, you know, think about how you would want to be replied to acknowledge the person. It makes sense that you felt this way. It sounds like it was, you know, however you want to do it, anger always wants to be acknowledged. So that's a great marketing technique to just know from a psychology point of view, acknowledge their experience. How can we make this better for you? Um, we'd love to have, have you come back in or DM us to, you know, for how we can remedy this. It doesn't have to be so public what you offer because you might get held to that consistently with new clients too. And then my last thing is always, you know, that I've seen with wellness practitioners is to remember that there are two, two people involved in your business and it's you as the practitioner and you as the business owner. And they are very different people um, because the business owner of Modern Sanctuary you know, can't give it away for free, but the wellness practitioner in me really wants to because I want to heal everyone and help everyone. <laughs> but the business side of me knows like I can't do that um, because we have bills to pay and we have rent to pay and et cetera. So remember, there are two different people and the more that you can identify those two different parts of you, it will really help you to decipher, you know, is this post really in line with the business or is this more the wellness practitioner? They both have value, but you need to know when to use each of them too. And Max is very instrumental going, Alex, is this sale that you're doing from your practitioner wellness, like bleeding heart side of wanting to help? Um, or is it from the business side and wh where, you know, and just being able to identify those two parts too. Yeah, and just to hammer that that home, don't be afraid to give a, a discount and recognize from the get-go, are you gonna be the brand that's always on discount? Or are you gonna be the brand that's sometimes giving a discount just to get people into the door, right? If you're finding yourself always having to give discounts to get customers, then there's probably a bigger problem at large that you need to address. But to Alex's point, sometimes as a practitioner, sometimes like, to me, even as an agency, right? We charge a flat monthly fee. It's the same fee to every single company that works with us. Sometimes a company will come to me and they'll just say, hey, our last urgency, our last agency just burned us. Like they took all of our money. They didn't run any ads. Like we just wasted 15 grand. And sometimes like that, that sweetheart inside of me just wants to say, I'm really sorry. I'll discount our retainer because I don't want them having a bad taste in their mouth for agencies, you know, as a whole. Right. Or I just really want to help them because they were, they were messed up. But then I realized, okay, we're going to be deprioritizing them because all of our clients pay the same monthly fee. And like Alex said, I have bills to pay. I have payroll. I have employees. I have to you know, put food on the table for them and put food on the table for me and my girlfriend and my new puppy. So, well, my girlfriend Especially for the supports puppy. herself, but mostly I have to support and put food on the table for me and for the puppy. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> It's, it's, always, it's always a delicate line that you have to figure out. But from the get-go, decide if you're going to be the brand that is always on discounting, which is not bad. Like So many companies exist on the back of discounts and promotions nonstop. nonstop. Dick's Sporting Goods, multi-billion dollar company. Levi's always has a sale running jeans, right? They sell jeans. And they always, always, always have some sort of a sale going. Uh, Jiffy Lube. Like literally I was at Jiffy Lube getting my, cause I'm in California, I have my car here and uh, I was getting my oil changed and I went in because they mailed my parents a $30 off coupon. I went there and then they handed me a coupon for my next one and they got me in the system and they got me in the system. Some companies Bed, are just bath, built on that and that's fine. Bed, bath, and beyond. Bed, bath and beyond. Perfect example. Have you ever gone there without a 20% off coupon? Perfect example. My mom, yells at me if I don't go to Bed Bath & Beyond without a coupon. She cuts them out and clips them, mails them to me in New York just so I can save $3 or $4 because it's the psychology of it. The time it takes for her to cut it out and mail those to me, you know, 20% off, it's going to save me 15 bucks. Like, yes, I'm saving 15 bucks, but is that really worth the headache? I'm not even the headache, just the time and energy it takes to, oh, where's the coupon? I got to get the coupon. Okay, pull it out of my pocket. Okay, this one is applying to this. This one applies that. Does it even really save us money? It's marginal dollars. It's 10 bucks out of X you know, amount of dollars you make every year, but it's the consumer psychology of it. So don't be afraid to be one of those brands. Everyone wants to be the high-end luxury brand because you can charge more, but if you're charging more because you don't want to be that brand, 
and then you don't have a full day of consultations or you know massages or whatever it is then you're not doing it right you're, you're charging too much and you're not getting people into the funnel into your marketing funnel well enough awesome max anything else? i know it's just five o'clock um and we can probably open up to question q a um anything else before we swap into that next q a part um no i'll say this at the end but if you guys have any questions at all please drop me an email. I'm always happy to give my two cents or hop on a quick call um, and walk you through things. Any friend of modern is a friend of mine. And uh, my email is max, M-A-X at hellscreative.com. Just let me know how else I can help because I have some time and I want to help practitioners. I think it's great what you guys do and drop me a line. I just put it in the chat bot too for everyone. Perfect. Um, does anybody have any questions for Max or I? You can either chat bot it or uh, <laughs> unmute yourself. I think everyone can unmute themselves. Cool. All right. All right. I guess uh, we said everything that, that needs to be said. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just, I just unmuted to, to say thank you. And um, I have a young daughter who probably, hopefully, will get a job in the next few years <laughs> and she's not that young and you know so i'm happy to have you know met you because she's probably one of the people that will do something on her own on social media she just put um, an etsy site up with some drawings that she did Amazing. And, um you know i don't think anybody's like really buying anything so she doesn't you know she's very talented and good maybe one day alex she does very uh, like awesome sound healings. No kidding. Yeah, send her my way. Yeah, if she ever comes back from India. I know, right? I hope but, she <laughs> like, I know. But she, you know, she picked up a lot of, you know, learning experiences along the way. So anyway, so Max, maybe, you know, in the future, she'll need help with that. You know, she didn't really go to college, college. So, so and, and I don't know anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, maybe we could use your services someday. Absolutely. Yeah. Drop me a line. Always happy to help. Thank you. Amazing. You got it. Yeah. You know, Max, I was meant to tell you, I was, we did a whole workshop on um, vision boarding with Allison yesterday. Oh. And such a cool point about how having images on a board can be so powerful because it gets a different part of your brain thinking and why it's so imperative to have the proper images in marketing, right? Because it says so much, right? Yeah, it's, it's been one of the themes actually of quarantine for me. Um, a lot of our clients are sending us paragraphs upon paragraphs to add to landing pages or to add to ads. Uh, and you, know, you just have so much free time, you just wanna write and write and write. And a really big theme for me has been what I learned in third grade, a picture's worth a thousand words. There's no paragraph really that can't be explained in a diagram or in a picture. Yeah. So picking the right visuals and, and having the right high quality images uh, or videos is, is just as powerful as a, or if not more powerful than, you know, two or three sentences right. in a paragraph. Totally. So images yeah. are important. So stock images don't always do it. When they don't, hire John Buley to do your awesome video. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. That guy's, that guy's great. He makes some really high quality videos and he really crushed it for modern. We made a ton of money off of his. He did awesome his videos. videos. <laughs> I'm waiting to get him back in for some more videos too. Yeah. That steady cam he has, it's really cool. And then when you put it with some like funky music, it makes some simple, boring or not so boring things look really cool, really futuristic and really intriguing. I agree. Well, yeah. we'll have to powwow over modern marketing later. But <laughs> for now, if no one else has any other questions, um, 
Hey, Alex, this is Divine J9. I'm here in Brooklyn, New York, and so I'm waving to you guys virtually. Um, <laughs> uh, Modern Sanctuary is a great space. If you haven't yet been there, go check it out. It's got a great vibe. Um, Max, thank you so much uh, to both of you, Alex and Max. Thank you for bringing so much value to this hour. I can't believe it's already after five, um, but, but bringing you guys brought so much value. So I appreciate you both, and I just want to thank you both for that. And just lots of great, great things to noodle on. Um, thank you for all of this um, great, great little tips here. Um, Are you definitely being permitted to them. I am. I'm an energy medicine master here in Brooklyn. Oh my gosh, we should connect. Yeah, I'm actually doing a free um, a sound bath tonight on Instagram Live. So if you're free at eight, tune in. I would love to. I. My baby's usually going right to bed around that time, but um, shoot me an email. I just put my email in the chat box. We would love to see if we can collab or do something together to support you. Okay, sounds good. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for sharing. Thank that. you for saying thank you. If you have any questions, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Normally, uh, our retainers are a little bit above the practitioner realms, but I spend a lot of time on coffees in New York City or over Zoom or over... Google Hangouts or FaceTime helping practitioners because they've helped me a lot and I want to give back. So let me know how I can help. Awesome. Thank you so much. You got it. Cool. Awesome. Well, this will be up very soon. Um, I'm going to post it to the website of modernsanctuary.com slash past dash talks. And um, we will chit chat later. Thank you, everybody. And I think tomorrow is our CBD 101 talk with Veritas Farms, if anyone's interested in learning more about um, CBD and all that good stuff. Amazing. Ciao. Thanks, everybody. Ciao. Thank you. <laughs>